Court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade and moving it back to the states. This is something that everybody wanted. Now, 10 years ago or so, they started talking about how many weeks and how many this, getting into other things. But every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. If you look at Ohio, it was a decision that was, it was a, an end result that was a little bit more liberal than you would have thought. Uh, Kansas, I would say the same thing. Uh, Texas is different. Florida is different. But they're all making their own decisions right now. And right now, the states control it. That's the vote of the people. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in the exceptions. I am a person that believes. And frankly, I think it's important to believe in the exceptions. Some people, you have to follow your heart. Some people don't believe in that. But I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. I think it's very important. Some people don't. Follow your heart. But you have to get elected also. And because that has to do with other things. You've got to get elected. The problem they have is they're radical because they will take the life of a child in the eighth month, the ninth month, and even after birth. After birth, if you look at the former governor of Virginia, he was willing to do this. He said, we'll put the baby aside and we'll determine what we do with the baby, meaning we'll kill the baby. What happened is we brought it back to the states and the country is now coming together on this issue. It's been a great thing. Thank you. President Biden? It's been a terrible thing, what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Supported Roe. And that was, that's, this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in six weeks. You're, you don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your, and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. Let each state have a different rule. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming in, to, they talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women who are being raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses brothers and sisters by oh, just it's, it's just ridiculous and they can do nothing about it and they try to arrest them when they cross state lines thank you there have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border we have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world and he opened it up and these killers are coming into our country and they are raping and killing women and it's a terrible thing. As far as the abortion is concerned, it is now back with the states. The states are voting. Uh, in many cases, the, it's a, frankly a very liberal decision. In many cases, it's the opposite. But they're voting, and it's bringing it back to the vote of the people, which is what everybody wanted, including the founders, if they knew about this issue, which, frankly, they didn't. But they would have done, everybody wanted brought back. Ronald Reagan wanted it brought back. He wasn't able to get it. Everybody wanted it brought back, and many presidents had tried to get it back. I was the one to do it. And again, this gives it the vote of the people, and that's where they wanted it. Every legal scholar wanted it that way. Staying on the topic of abortion, President Biden, seven states, I'll let you do that. Uh, this is the same topic. Seven states have no legal restrictions on how far into a pregnancy a woman can obtain an abortion. Do you support any legal limits on how late a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy? I support Roe v. Wade, which had three trimesters. The first time is between the woman and the doctor. Second time is between the doctor and an extreme situation. The third time is between the doctor, I mean, be between the, the woman and the state. The idea that the politicians, they, they, that the founders wanted the politicians to be the ones making decisions about women's health is ridiculous. That's the last. No politician should be making that decision. A doctor should be making those decisions. That's how it should be run. That's what you're going to do. And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. So that means he can take the life of the baby in the ninth month and even after birth, because some states, Democrat run, take it after birth. Again, the governor, former governor of Virginia, put the baby down, then we decide what to do with it. So he's, in, he's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. Nobody wants that to happen, Democrat or Republican. Nobody wants it to happen. That is simply not true. 
that Roe v. Wade does not provide for that. That's not the circumstance. Only the woman's life is in danger. She's going to die. That's the only circumstance in which that can happen. But we are not for late-term abortion, period, period, period. Under Roe v. Wade, you have late-term abortion. You can do whatever you want, depending on the state. You can do whatever you want. We don't think that's a good thing. We think it's a radical thing. We think the Democrats are the radicals, not the Republicans. For 51 years, that was the law. 51 years, constitutional scholarship said it was the right way to go. 51 years, and it was taken away because this guy put very conservative members on the Supreme Court. He takes credit for taking it away. What's he going to do? What's he going to do, in fact, if the, if the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board, at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Thank you. Let's turn now to the issue of immigration and border security. President Biden, a record number of migrants have illegally crossed the southern border on your watch overwhelming border states and overburdening cities such as New York and Chicago and in some cases causing real safety and security concerns. Given that, why should voters trust you to solve this crisis? Because we worked very hard to get a bipartisan agreement that not only changed all of that, it made sure that we are in a situation where you had no circumstance where they could come across the border with the number of border police there are now. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers. Significantly, by the way, the Border Patrol endorsed me, endorsed my position. In addition to that, we found ourselves in a situation where when he was president, he was taking, separating babies from their mothers, putting them in cages, making sure they were, the families were separated. That's not the right way to go. What I've done since I've changed the law, what's happened? I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border legally. That's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we can do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The board, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons, people that are from mental institutions, insane asylum, terrorists. We have the largest number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists, all over the world, not just in South America, all over the world. They come from the Middle East, everywhere. All over the world, they're pouring in. And this guy just left it open. And he didn't need legislation because I didn't have legislation. I said, close the border. We had the safest border in history. In that final couple of months of my presidency, we had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me for president. Brandon, just speak to him. But look, we had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up in Thank caravans. Thank you, President Trump. Uh, President Biden? The only terrorist who's done anything crossing the border is one who came along and killed three, under his administration, killed an Al-Qaeda person, come in and his administration, killed three American soldiers, killed three American soldiers. That's the only terrorist that's there. I'm not saying that no terrorist ever got through, but the idea they're emptying their prisons, we're, le we're welcoming these people, that's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's exaggerating, he's lying. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are al-Baghdadi and Soleimani the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world, and it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, ha we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in New York, in California, in every state in the union because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. border. And because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens. 
at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother, and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like. And we have to get a lot of these people out, and we have to get them out fast, because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street. They're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care. He doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Joyce, that I got through Congress, all of the different things I approved, they abandoned. We had by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did. And I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed so many people at our border by Thank allowing you, all of these people to come in. President and it's Biden. a very sad day in America. President Biden, you have the mic. Every single thing he said is a lie. Every single one. For example, Veterans are a hell of a lot better off since I passed the PACT Act. One million of them now have insurance and their families have it. Their families have it because what happened, whether it was Agent Orange or burn pits, they're all being covered now. And he opposed, his group opposed that. We're also in a situation where we have great respect for veterans. My, spent, my son spent a year in Iraq, living one next to one of those burn pits, came back with stage four glioblastoma. I was recently in, in, in uh, France for D-Day, and I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, he was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. President Trump. Uh, first of all, that was a made-up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third-rate magazine that's failing, like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. He put it in commercials. We've notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this. Who would say, I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taken better care. I'm so glad this came up and he brought it up. There's nobody that's taken better care of our soldiers than I have. To think that I would, in front of generals and others, say suckers and losers. We have 19 people that said it was never said by me. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up, just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking. It's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russia disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russia disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Yeah, Four-star general standing to your side was on your staff who said you said it, period. That's number one. And number two, the idea, the idea that I have to apologize to you for anything along the line. We've done more for veterans than any president has in American history. American history. And they now are in their family. The only sacred obligation we have as a country is to care for our veterans when they come home and their families and equip them when they go to war. That's what we're doing. That's what the VA is doing now. They're doing more for veterans than ever before in our history. All right. Thank you so much. Let's move to the topic of foreign policy. I want to begin with Russia's war against Ukraine, which is now in its third year. Former President Trump, Russian President Vladimir Putin says he'll only end this war if Russia keeps the Ukrainian territory it has already claimed and Ukraine abandons its bid to join NATO. Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? First of all, our veterans and our soldiers can't stand this guy. They can't stand him. They think he's the worst commander in chief, if that's what you call him, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real president, the president that knew, that was respected by Putin, he would have never, he would have never invaded Ukraine. A lot of people are dead right now, much more than people know. You know, they talk about numbers. You can double those numbers, maybe triple those numbers. He did nothing to stop it. In fact, I think he encouraged Russia from going in. 
I'll tell you what happened. He was so bad with Afghanistan. It was such a horrible embarrassment, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, that when Putin watched that and he saw the incompetence, that he should, he should have fired those generals like I fired the one that you mentioned. And so he's got no love lost. But he should have fired those generals. No general got fired for the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, Afghanistan, where we left billions of dollars of equipment behind. We lost 13 beautiful soldiers, and 38 soldiers were obliterated. And by the way, we left people behind, too. We left American citizens behind. When Putin saw that, he said, you know what? I think we're going to go in and maybe take my, this was his dream. I talked to him about it, his dream. The difference is he never would have invaded Ukraine, never just like Israel would have never been invaded in a million years by Hamas. You know why? Because Iran was broke with me. I wouldn't let anybody do business with them. They ran out of money. They were broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for anything. No money for terror. That's why you had no terror at all during my administration. This place, the whole world is blowing up under him. President Biden. Never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. Look, the fact of the matter is that we're in a situation where, let's take the last point first. Iran attacked American troops, kill, uh, caused brain damage for a number of these troops, and he did nothing about it recently, not when he was president. There they attacked. He said they're just having headaches. That's all it is. But he didn't do a thing when the attack took place, number one. Number two, we got over 100,000 Americans and others out of, of uh, Afghanistan during that airlift. Number three, we found ourselves in a situation where if you take a look at what Trump did in Ukraine, he, this guy told Ukraine, he told Trump, do whatever you want, and <clears throat> do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Trump did to Putin, encourage him, do whatever you want. And he went in, and listen to what he said when he went in. He was gonna take Kiev in five days, remember? Because it's part of the old Soviet Union. That's what he wanted to reestablish. Kiev, and he in fact didn't do it at all. He didn't wasn't able to get it done, and they've lost over they've lost thousands and thousands of troops, 500,000 troops. President Trump, I, I never come said back to that. You for, for one minute, I just want to go back to my original question, which yeah. is: Are Putin's terms acceptable to you? Keeping the territory no, in acceptable. Ukraine? No, they're not acceptable. But look, this is a war that never should have started. If we had a leader in this war, he led everybody along. He's given $200 billion now or more to Ukraine. He's given $200 billion. That's a lot of money. I don't think there's ever been anything like it. Every time that Zelensky comes to this country, he walks away with $60 billion. He's the greatest salesman ever. And I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking anything. I'm only saying he, the money that we're spending on this war, and we shouldn't be spending. It should have never happened. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. You know, Biden, you have a minute. The fact is that Putin is a war criminal. He's killed thousands and thousands of people. And he has made one thing clear. He wants to reestablish what was part of the Soviet empire, not just a piece He wants all of Ukraine. That's what he wants. And then you think he'll stop there? Do you think he'll stop when he, if he, if he takes Ukraine? What do you think happens to Poland? What do you think of Belarus? What do you think happens to those NATO countries? And so if you want a war, you ought to find out what he's going to do, because if in fact he does what he says and walks away, and by the way, all that money we give Ukraine are from weapons we make here in the United States. We give them the weapons, not the money at this point. And, and our NATO allies have produced as much funding for Ukraine as we have. That's why, it's, that's why we're strong. Thank you. Moving on to the Middle East. In October, Hamas attacked Israel, killing more than 1,000 people and taking hundreds of hostages. Among those held and thought to still be alive are five Americans. Israel's response has killed thousands of Palestinians and created a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. President Biden, you've put forward a, pl a proposal to resolve this conflict, but so far Hamas has not released the remaining hostages and Israel is continuing its military offensive in Gaza. So what additional leverage will you use to get Hamas and Israel to end the war? You have two minutes. 
Number one, everyone from the United Nations Security Council straight through to the G7 to the Israelis and Netanyahu himself have endorsed the plan I put forward, endorsed the plan I put forward, which has three stages to it. The first stage is trade the hostages for a ceasefire. Second phase is a ceasefire with additional conditions. The third phase is no, the end of the war. The only one who wants the war to continue is Hamas, number one. They're the only ones standing out. We're still pushing hard from, to get them to accept. In the meantime, what's happened? In Israel, we're finding that the only thing I've denied Israel was 2,000-pound bombs. They don't work very well in populated areas. They kill a lot of innocent people. We're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. And by the way, I'm the guy that organized the world against Iran when they had a full-blown intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missile attack on Israel. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed, and it, it stopped. We saved Israel. We are the biggest pr pr producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. And so that's, there, there are two different things. Hamas cannot be allowed to be continued. We continue to send our experts and our intelligence people as to how they can get Hamas like we did bin Laden. You don't have to do it. And by the way, they've been greatly weakened, Hamas, greatly weakened, and they should be. They should be eliminated. But you've got to be careful for what using certain weapons among population centers. Just going back to Ukraine for one second. We have an ocean separating us. The European nations together have spent a hundred billion or maybe more than that, less than us. Why doesn't he call them and say, you've got to put up your money like I did with NATO? I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. The Secretary General of NATO said Trump did the most incredible job I've ever seen. You wouldn't, they wouldn't have any, they were going out of business. We were spending almost a hundred percent of the money was, it was paid by us. He didn't do that. He's getting all, you got to ask these people to put up the money. We're over a hundred billion dollars more spent and it has a bigger impact on them because of location, because we have an ocean in between. You got to ask them as far as Israel and, and Hamas. Israel's the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one and you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian. But they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. President Biden, do you have a minute? I've never heard so much foolishness. This is a guy who wants to get out of NATO. Are you going to stay in NATO? He's going to pull out of NATO. The idea that we have, our strength lies in our alliances as well. It may be a big ocean, but we're ever able to avoid a war in, in Europe, a major war in Europe. What happens if, in fact, you have Putin continue to go into, into NATO? We have an Article 5 agreement. Attack on one is attack on all. You want to start the nuclear war he keeps talking about, go ahead, let Putin go in and control Ukraine, and then move on to Poland and other places. We'll see what happens then. He has no idea what the hell he's talking about. And by the way, I got 50 other nations around the world to support Ukraine, including Japan and South Korea, because they understand that this, this, this kind of dislocation has a serious threat to the whole world peace. No, no major war in Europe has ever been able to be contained just to Europe. President Trump, just to follow up, would you support the creation of an independent Palestinian state in order to achieve peace in the region? I'd have to see, but before we do that, the problem we have is that we spend all the money. So they kill us on trade. I made great trade deals with the European nations. Because if you add them up, they're about the same size economically. Their economy is about the same size as the United States. And they were written, no cars, no, they don't want anything that we have, but we're supposed to take their cars, their food, their everything, their agriculture. I changed that. But the big thing I changed is they don't want to pay. And the only reason that he can play games with NATO is because I got them to put up hundreds of billions of dollars. I said, and he's right about this, I said, no, I'm not going to support NATO if you don't pay. They asked me that question, would you guard us against Russia at a very secret meeting of the 28 uh, states at that time, uh, nations at that time? And they said, no, if you don't pay, I won't do that. And you know what happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in the next day and the next months. But now we're in the same position. We're paying everybody's bills. Let's turn to the issue of democracy. Uh, former President Trump 
Uh, I want to ask you about January 6, 2021. After you rallied your supporters that day, some of them stormed the Capitol to stop the constitutionally mandated counting of electoral votes. As president, you swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6th and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I don't think too many believe that. And let me tell you about January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in, and we're now laughed at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. The, what happened to the United States' reputation under this man's leadership is horrible, including weaponization, which I'm sure at some point you'll be talking about, where he goes after his political opponent because he can't beat him fair and square. You have 80 seconds left. My question was, what do you say to those voters who believe that you violated your constitutional oath through your actions and inaction on January 6, 2021, and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I didn't say that to anybody. I said peacefully and patriotically. And Nancy Pelosi, if you just watched the news from two days ago, on tape to her daughter, who is a documentary filmmaker, they say, but she's saying, oh, no, it's my responsibility. I was responsible for this. Because I offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard, and she turned them down. And the mayor of, in writing, by the way, the mayor, in writing, turned it down, the mayor of, of D.C. They turned it down. I offered 10,000 because I could see. I had virtually nothing to do. They asked me to go make a speech. I could see what was happening. Everybody was saying they're going to be there on January 6th. They're going to be there. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of people coming. You could feel it. You could feel it too, and you could feel it. And I said, they ought to have some National Guard or whatever. And I offered it to her. And she now admits that she turned it down. And it was the same day she was, I don't know, she can't be very happy with her daughter because it made her into a liar. She said, I take full responsibility for January 6th. President Biden. Look, he encouraged those folks to go up on Capitol Hill, number one. I sat in the dining room off the Oval Office. He sat there for three hours, three hours watching, begging, being begged by his vice president and a number of his colleagues on the Republican side as well to do something, to call for a stop, to end it. Instead, he talked, they talked about these people being patriots and, and, and great patrons of America. In fact, he says he'll now forgive them for what they've done. He'll, They've been convicted. He says he wants to commute their sentences and say that no. But he went to every single court in the nation. I don't know how many cases, scores of cases, including the Supreme Court. And they said, they said, no, no, this guy, this guy is responsible for doing what is being, that was done. He did do a damn thing. And these people should be in jail. And they should be the ones who are being held accountable. And he wants to let them all out. And now he says if he loses again, such a whiner that he is, that it could be a bloodbath. Thank you, President Biden. President Trump? What they've done to some people that are so innocent, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What you have done, how you've destroyed the lives of so many people. When they ripped down Portland, when they ripped down uh, many other cities, you go to Minnesota, Minneapolis, what they've done there, with the fires all over the city. If I didn't bring in the National Guard, that city would have been destroyed. When you look at all of the, they took over big chunks of Seattle. I was all set to bring in the National Guard. They heard that, they saw them coming, and they left immediately. What he said about this whole subject is so off. Peacefully patriotic. One other thing, the unselect committee, which is basically two horrible Republicans that are all gone now out of office, and Democrats, all Democrats, they destroyed and deleted all of the information they found because they found out we were right. We were right. And they deleted and destroyed all of the information. They should go to jail for that. If a Republican did that, they'd go to Thank jail. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, I want to give you a minute. The only person on this stage is a convicted felon is the man I'm looking at right now. And the fact of the matter is, he is in, he's, what he's telling you is simply not true. The fact is that there was no effort on his part to stop what was going on up in Capitol Hill. And all those people, every one of those who were convicted, deserves to be convicted. The idea that they didn't kill somebody just went in and broke down doors, broke the windows, 
uh, occupied offices, turned over desks, turned them over statues. The idea that those people are patriots? Come on. When I asked him about the first two debates we had, the debates we had the first time around, I said, will you denounce the Proud Boys? He said, no, I'll tell them to stand by. The idea he's refusing, to, will you denounce these guys? Will you denounce the people we're talking about now? Will you denounce the people who attacked that capital? What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, give you a, a, a minute, President Trump, for a follow-up question I have. Um, after a jury convicted you of 34 felonies last month, you said if reelected, you would, quote, have every right to go after, unquote, your political opponents. You just talked about members of the select committee on January 6th going to jail. Your main political opponent is standing on stage with you tonight. Can you clarify exactly what it means about you feeling you have every right to go after your political opponents? Well, I said my retribution is going to be success. We're going to make this country successful again, because right now it's a failing nation. My retribution is going to be success. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon at a very high level. His son is convicted, going to be convicted probably numerous other times. Should have been convicted before, but his Justice Department let the statute of limitations lapse on the most important things. But he could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All of the death caused at the, the border, uh, telling the Ukrainian people that we're going to want a billion dollars or you change the prosecutor, otherwise you're not getting a billion dollars. If I ever said that, that's quid pro quo, that we're not going to do anything. We're not going to give you a billion dollars unless you change your prosecutor having to do with the son. This man is a criminal. This man, you're lucky. You're lucky. I did nothing wrong. We'd have a system that was rigged and disgusting. I did nothing wrong. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, I'm coming right to you, sir. You, well, you want to respond? Go ahead. I'll give you a minute to respond. The idea that I did anything wrong relative to what you're talking about is outrageous. It's simply a lie, number one. Number two, the idea that you have a right to seek retribution against any American just because you're president is wrong. It's simply wrong. No president's ever spoken like that before. No president in our history has spoken like that before. Number three, the crimes that you are still charged with, and think of all the civil penalties you have. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star on the night while your wife was pregnant? I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. Number two, that was a case that was started and moved. They moved a high-ranking official, a DOJ, into the Manhattan DA's office to start that case. That case is going to be appealed and won. We had a very uh, terrible judge, a horrible judge, Democrat. The prosecutor were all high-ranking Democrats, appointed people, and the, both the civil and the criminal. He basically went after his political opponent because he thought it was going to damage me. But when the public found out about these cases, because they understand it better than he does. He has no idea what these cases are. But when, he, the, when they found out about these cases, you know what they did? My poll numbers went up, way up. You know that because you're reporting it. And we took in more money in the last two weeks than we've ever taken in in the history of, of any campaign. I don't think any campaign has ever taken. Hundreds of millions of dollars came pouring in because the public knows it's a scam and it's a guy that's after his political opponent because he can't win fair and square. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden, you have said, quote, Donald Trump and his MAGA Republicans are determined to destroy American democracy. Do you believe that the tens of millions of Americans who are likely to vote for President Trump will be voting against American democracy? The more they know about what he's done, yes. The more they know about what he's done. And there's a lot more coming. He's got a lot of cases down the road coming around. He's got, he's got a whole range of issues he has to face. I don't know what the juries will do, but I do, I do know he has a real problem. And so the fact that... Could you ever think you hear any president say that I'm going to seek retribution? Did you ever hear any president say that I thought Hitler had some good ideas? What got me involved to run the first place after my son had died, I decided in Iraq, because of Iraq, I said I wasn't going to run again until I saw what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. People coming out of the woods carrying swastikas on torches, torches, and, and singing the same anti-Semitic bile they sang when 
back in Germany. And what did, and the young woman got killed. I spoke to the mother. And she, they asked him, they said, what, what, what do you think of those people? The people who, the ones who got killed, the one who tried to stop it, and the ones he said, I think they're fine people on both sides. What American president would ever say, Nazis coming out of fields, carrying torches, singing the same anti-Semitic bile, carrying swastikas, were fine people. And this is a guy who says Hitler's done some good things. I'd like to know what they are. The good things Hitler's done, that's what he said. This guy has no sense of American democracy. President Trump. Jake, both of you know that story has been totally wiped out because when you see the sentence, it said 100% exoneration on this. So he just keeps it going. He says he ran because of Charlottesville. He didn't run because of Charlottesville. He ran because it was his last chance. It, it, he's not equipped to be president. You know it and I know it. It's ridiculous. We have a debate. We're trying to justify his presidency. His presidency is, without question, the worst president, the worst presidency in the history of our country. We shouldn't be having a debate about it. There's nothing to debate. He made up the Charlottesville story, and you'll see it's debunked all over the place. Every anchor, has deb every reasonable anchor has debunked it. And just the other day it came out where it was fully debunked. It's a nonsense story. He knows that, and he didn't run because of Charlottesville. He used that as an excuse to run. President Biden. And debunked. It happened. All you have to do is listen to what was said at the time. And the idea that somehow that's the only reason I ran. I ran because I was worried a guy like this guy could get elected. If he thought they were good people coming out of that, all, that forest, carrying those, those woods, carrying those torches, then he didn't deserve to be president. Didn't deserve to be president at all. And the idea that he's talking about all this being fabricated, we saw with our own eyes. We saw what happened on January 6th. We saw the people breaking through the windows. We saw people occupying the... His own vice president, look, there's a reason why 40 of his 44 top cabinet officers refused to endorse him this time. His vice president hasn't endorsed him this time. So why? Why? They know him well. They serve with him. Why are they not endorsing him? Thank you, President Biden. We're going to be right back with more from the CNN presidential debate.